In this example problem, we're going to design the transverse reinforcement for the following beam, and we're going to use practical design considerations. Uh, this means that we're going to use the ACI simplified uh, expressions for concrete strength, and we're going to use a, a constant spacing along the entire beam length. We'll assume that uh, we first completed the flexure design. Uh, so we found that for uh, our 15 and a half uh, foot beam, we needed four number nine bars uh, to hold the um, given loading um, for flexure. I will also assume that the dead load in, is including um, self weight, so we don't need to add uh, that in addition to the four uh, kip per foot uh, dead load that's given. And we can also see uh, that we have bearing pads um, at the end of the beams. Um, so we'll assume that our span length is from center to center of the bearing pads. So for uh, six inch bearing pads on each side, um, our span length is uh, 15 and a half feet minus um, one uh, bearing pad length, um, so six inches. So our L span is 15 feet. So our first step then is to determine the factored shear demand along the beam length and also at the critical section. Uh, so in order to do this, we first need to find our uh, factored distributed load. So we'll take our WU is equal to 1.2 times our dead load, four kips per foot, plus 1.6 times our live load, two, kips per foot, uh, which will give us eight kips per foot as our distributed load. So we know for a simply supported beam, the shear at the ends is equal to our reactions. So our V U max is going to be equal to uh, W U times L over two. So eight kips per foot times our L, which is our span length, divided by two, uh, will give us 60 kips. So this 60 kips is our shear at the ends of our beam, or at the centroid of our, uh, our bearings. I will next find the shear at our, at our critical section. So our, our V, U, Critical. Uh, so this is going to be equal to our 60 kips, our shear at the end of the beam, uh, minus our 8 kips per foot, which is the slope of our shear diagram, equal to our distributed load, times our D, which is 18 inches, uh, plus half of uh, the support. So we see that um, our D is from the face of our bearing pad, or the face of our support. Um, so D away from that. So we have half of our bearing pad plus our D. Um, so 18 inches is our D, and 3 inches is the half of our bearing pad um, length, and then divided by 12 inches per foot uh, to make our units consistent. And we'll get our VU critical to be 46 uh, kips. So this is the value um, at our critical section. So we next need to calculate our required uh, shear strength along the length of the beam. Uh, so our VN required is just going to be our VU, which we found um, on the previous slide, uh, divided by 0.75, which is our fee factor for our uh, shear strength. So our VN uh, required at the max point then is going to be equal to our 60 kips divided by 0.75, uh, which will give us 80 kips. So 80.0 kips. Uh, we can also find our VN required at our critical section. And this will be 46 uh, kips divided by 0.75, uh, which will give us 61.3 kips. 
So on our, our VN required diagram, we'll have 80 kips at the ends, or at the centroid of our bearings. And then at our critical section, uh, we'll have 61.3 kips. The next step is to calculate our concrete shear strength. And um, we're, using, we're doing a practical design, so we're going to use the ACI simplified expression for our concrete shear strength. So our VC is then just going to be equal to 2 times the square root of our F prime C, which is 4,000 PSI. Remember, for ACI, um, we're going to use PSI in our square root. And then this is times our BW, which we can look at our, our section, and our BW is uh, 12 inches, and our D is 18 inches. And we're going to divide this by 1,000 pounds per kip uh, to give us units of kips, and we'll get our um, VC to be 27.3 kips. So this is the VC that we're going to use uh, moving forward. Our next step is to compare the VC that we just calculated to our VN required at the critical section, and we'll design our steel as needed. So at our critical section, we found our VC to be equal to 27.3 kips and our VN required uh, equal to 61.3 kips. Uh, so you can see that our VN required is greater than our VC, so we need steel uh, for our shear strength. To find how much steel we need, we can find our VS required. And we do that by taking our VN required, 61.3 minus our VC, 27.3. And we'll get our VS required to be 34.0 kips. So this is how much uh, shear strength we need to provide with our steel reinforcement. We need to next assume a uh, bar diameter and a number of bars for our shear reinforcement. Um, so for this problem, we're going to assume number three bars, and we're going to assume that we have two uh, legs. So our AV is equal to 2 times 0.11 inches squared, which is the area of our number three bar. So we got our AV to be 0.22 square inches. Uh, it's also OK to assume um, number four bars or uh, number five bars. Uh, typically, we don't use shear reinforcement greater than a number five bar um, because we do have a, a spacing, um, a maximum spacing that's allowed as well. We can then find our spacing that's required by uh, rearranging the expression that we use to find our uh, shear, uh, shear capacity um, or contribution from our steel. Uh, so our spacing required is equal to our area of steel, which in our case is 0.22 square inches, uh, times Fy of our transverse reinforcement, so 60 KSI, times D, which for us is 18 inches, and then divided by our VS required, which we found to be 34.0 kips. And we'll find our spacing then to be 6.99 inches. Uh, so this is the maximum allowable spacing that we can have. So we need to have a spacing that's less than this S value. So generally, you want to round to a whole inch, um, although it is uh, acceptable to uh, round to the half inch as well. Um, but we're going to round to a whole inch, so we're going to use a number three bar at six inch spacing on center. Uh, so we're going to have number three bars, two legs, spaced at six inches on center. So we need to next check our ACI limits. So we'll check our max spacing and our min steel limits. Uh, so for max spacing, we'll have um, when uh, our VS 
contribution is less than uh, four root f prime c bwd. Our uh, max spacing is the minimum of d over two um, and 24. So in our case, our d over two is nine inches and, uh, and nine inches is less than 24. Um, so our max spacing is nine inches. So we have bars at six inches. Our max spacing is nine inches. Um, so we're okay here. So next we need to check our min steel. So here we have uh, our min steel is the max of these two values. So 50 times our BW, which is 12 inches, times our spacing that we provide, which is six inches, divided by FY. So remember in ACI, we're using units of PSI. Um, and we'll find this to be 0 0.060 square inches. So then our other value, 0.75 times square root of 4,000 PSI times 12 inches times 6 inches divided by 60,000 PSI uh, will give us 0. 0.057 square inches. So we have a min steel requirement of 0 0.060 square inches. Um, and we see that our 0 0.22 square inches that we provide is indeed greater than the 0 0.06. Um, so we're okay here as well. So our final step is to draw the final section and check the actual capacity. So uh, what we need to do first is look at how the stirrups are actually laid out in our, in our, uh, along our beam length. Um, so the first thing we need to do is look at our uh, first stirrup here. And we need to place our first stirrup within um, half of our uh, spacing um, to the edge of the bearing pad. Um, so half of our spacing is three inches. So we need that first stirrup within three inches of that bearing. Um, so it just so happens that we can have um, the first stirrup spaced at three inches from the bearing, which is nine inches from the end of the beam, and then space the stirrups at six inches uh, along the rest of the length of the beam. Uh, and we'll get that we need uh, 29 stirrups along, along the beam length. So now we can calculate all, all of our uh, concrete and, and steel contributions to our, our shear strength. Uh, so first, our concrete contribution. Uh, this will be the same as before, but uh, I'm going to recalculate it anyway. Um, so 2 square root um, 4,000 PSI times 12 inches, which is our web width, and 18 inches, which is our D. And again, I'm going to divide by 1,000 pounds per kip to give us units of kip. Um, and we'll have 27.3 kips is our uh, concrete contribution to shear. Uh, next we have VS. So our AV, uh, we have two number three bars. So 0.22 square inches or two times 0.11 square inch times 60 KSI times our D, which is 18 inches and then divided by our spacing, which we have a six inch spacing along the length. And this will give us a VS of 39.6 kips. So our VN then is just the sum of our VC, 27.3, and our VS, 39.6, which will give us our VN equal to 66.9 kips. Our VVN is then equal to phi, which is 0.75 for shear. times 66.9 kips, uh, which will give us 50.2 kips. And we can compare this to our VU at our critical section, uh, which was 46 kips. And we can see that our VVN is greater than our VU at the critical section. So our design is OK. We could also use uh, several, several other methods um, to design the section. 
Uh, so what we did was a practical design. So our practical design, we used uniform steel along the length. We reduced our VU uh, using it at the critical section. And we use a simplified VC. Uh, so when with this, we found that we needed 27 stirrups for the design. Um, if we would use uniform steel and an unreduced VU and a simplified VC, uh, we would need 44 stirrups. So you can see um, that we can decrease the number of stirrups dramatically just by uh, reducing our VU um, and using our VU at the critical section. Um, so the other way, the other options are to use a uh, uniform steel with a reduced VU and a the detailed VC procedure. And in this case, we would be able to take five stirrups out of our beam. We could also use a non-uniform steel. So we could we could vary the spacing along the beam length. Um, and in that case, we could uh, decrease the number of stirrups um, if we use simplified or uh, detailed. Um, but in general, we should just use our practical design. Uh, we'll use uniform steel along the beam length. We'll reduce our VU for uh, VU at the critical section. And we'll use the simplified VC expression. This will make the beam simple uh, to construct um, and simple for us to uh, design.